Hey everyone, I'm Diana Davison, an advocate for the falsely accused and wrongfully convicted. A very important case that I've been following and reporting on for over a year has finally been documented in an explosive article. Meticulously researched by author Brad Cran, the article published on Quillette lays out a roadmap or database of how false accusations were mobilized to destroy former UBC professor Stephen Galloway's life. The case is important not just to clear Galloway's name, but because connected groups have been using cases like this to force hideous Title IX-style tribunals into our Canadian universities. Hundreds of other innocent lives are at stake. New sexual assault policies have been implemented in the universities that are even worse than what Stephen Galloway endured, and we have to put an end to it. The article is about 30 pages long, so I'm going to walk people through the highlights in a series of videos, with added commentary of my own, but you need to read the full article to get all the details. Brad Cran also wrote a great piece on academic mobbing, which connects to this story, and I'll put links to both of them in the video description. The article starts a bit slow, but the background is important because university officials basically allowed Galloway's life and career to be railroaded to suit their own political purposes. As Cran writes, these were not normal times at UBC, that's the University of British Columbia. Set to make an announcement about a successful fundraiser, they were trying to avoid scandals. Aware that CBC was going to air a report called School of Secrets, which was about mishandling of other sexual assault claims against a UBC History Department student, former creative writing student Chelsea Rooney came forward with serious allegations against then-creative writing chair Stephen Galloway. Only a week from the fundraising announcement, Rooney claimed that in addition to the main complainant, she could find 19 other people with allegations of abuse. These were not normal times is now an accurate statement for all Canadian universities. They have been mandated and pushed to adopt obscene sexual assault policies that strip the accused of any meaningful way to defend themselves. Despite Galloway being cleared in a third-party investigation conducted by esteemed former judge Mary Ellen Boyd, UBC fired him anyway, because of the scandals. Because of this move, Galloway's firing was used to wrongly assert his guilt in public and turned into yet another scandal to push an agenda. We'll get to the details of the Boyd investigation later, but for now I want to focus on this twisted aspect. Instead of the false allegations against Galloway properly being used to reinforce the need for fair investigations, the opposite occurred. His name was used to undermine due process. In what should be called the UBC hoax, an innocent man became propaganda to enable harming other innocent men. The public pressure on universities to adopt these insane new sexual assault policies are based on known lies. I presented UBC's latest policy to a group of lawyers last year, and we went over all of the violations of the rights of the accused sections which incentivize false accusations, the allowance for third-party and anonymous allegations to be documented in ways that can't be investigated at all, the denial of an accused right to even see the allegations against him, reconstructed by people who want to help the complainant. The list of injustices goes on. Now, one of the lawyers said, you have to sue the bastards. This is a policy clearly designed to avoid lawsuits and until the accused start suing the universities, they're not going to do a damn thing. I'm going to end the first video here with that thought, because he's right. One of the things I'm working on is an open letter to the universities drafted by a lawyer and signed by as many lawyers as we can find who are willing to help litigate against universities if they continue to conduct these kangaroo courts. Until there are financial consequences and lawyers working with the falsely accused to demand fair hearings, these tribunals will get worse. There will be more Stephen Galloway's fired despite evidence of innocence. More innocent young men will have their futures destroyed overnight. And the same people connected to Stephen Galloway's case are also connected to other high-profile cases of false accusations 
in the university system, backed by a few lawyers using the human rights tribunals to reshape our society through litigation. They must be stopped.